Craft. Craft never changes. Hi everyone, welcome to the Metal Crafter. About a month ago, I bought my first 3D printer, a Realities Hallowed One. And since then, I've dived into a whole new adventure. I've been experiencing with this new tool, watching a lot of videos, and also learning from personal mistakes. In this entry of the Fallout Wasteland Warfare series, I'm going to show you how I design a custom Wanderer by using a Mandalorian's model as base. As you can imagine, I have little experience with digital sculpting tools, but that will show you that you don't require much to customize your own mini. And of course, you'll get a free STL so you can print the mini and use it on your games. Let's hit the... computer! All models I used in the custom are free ones out there, mainly from Thingiverse, and I'll leave links to them below. I'm going to use a laser pistol, the main Mandalorian character with a cool pose, a pit boy which I'm going to take out from this overseer model, a T60 power armor's helmet, some grenades and a steam pack. The software I'm going to use for this build is Autodesk Mesh Mixer. This is a free software you can download from the internet. I'll leave a link below. Alright, first thing was removing the pit boy from the overseer's arm. There are several models that are built in parts, let's say. Don't know which is the software's correct terminology for this, but basically you can select and remove entire parts, like limbs, head, torso, or any elements the model may have. So first thing I do is to use the select tool and check if main parts can be removed. For this model, it does. So I go through each element except for the pit boy and delete those. Once I only have the pit boy I go to export and save it as its own STL. Next, I'm going to start working on the main model, so import the Mandalorian into this same project. I first check the model's integrity by running an analysis, then follow the same process as with the overseer and delete the rifle and bracer where the pit boy would go. I want it for the figure to look as if it is watching something in the Beat Boy's screen. So I needed to modify the arm's pose. Going to select the whole arm and then go to Edit and Separate. This will turn the arm into an individual object. With the arm selected, I go to Edit, then Transform, and rotate and move it to the desired position. Then I use the Sculpt tool to fill any gaps in the transition from the arm to the body. You have different options inside this tool, so test them for some time to understand how they work and which one you need for each part. You can pull or push sections, make recesses or fills. I thought the hand also needed some rotation, so cut it out the same way as we did with the arm and then moved it a bit. With the final pose set, I could go and position the pip boy. Rotate, moved, and resize as needed. If you need to make a part slimmer, like the arm here, so it's covered by the pit boy use the Sculpt tool. Okay, 
I'm going to import the laser pistol now and I'm going to use the original model's pistol as reference to position it correctly. Then I can remove the Mandalorian's pistol. Following previous test prints, I noticed the laser pistol's lower part was too thin and kept on breaking while removing the supports. So I added a bar-like shape with the mesh mix tool and positioned it so it was thicker and stronger. Did the same with the front of the pistol. Next, I'm moving on with the helmet. I used the original helmet as reference to position the T61. Once placed, remove the original. Here using the scope tool to remove the Mandalorian's sign on the shoulder and also modify the other arm's bracer to a simpler form. Then I rechecked the dimensions for all objects and so some changes were needed. By hiding away any of the objects from the object window, you can get a better perspective, like I do here to check the dimensions of the heads and helmet. Next, I'm adding the steam pack and since the Mandalorian has some items there in the chest belt, I'll use one of those to play some sort of container. I modify the object's depth so I don't have to play supports and it's more sturdy while printing. The shoulder pad got pretty deformed while changing the arm's position and I didn't like it. So re-imported the Mandalorian and separated a copy of the pad to use as individual object and replace it. Final objects I'm adding are a frag and pulse grenades. After that, I reselect the main body and run an analysis, inspector, to check for integrity issues. As we've removed the arm from the model, it has left a big hole in it, which is detected by the blue marker. By selecting it, it fixes and fills the hole automatically. With this, our model is complete and we can proceed to print it. After I washed the Mini and before curing it, I removed supports since they are flexible and easier to handle. Once the Mini is fully cured, we can proceed with painting. First thing is to give the Mini a primer and then proceed with the paint. I'll start with a grey base for the pants and the... Well, I clearly misplaced the camera and my head blocks most of the painting footage. So I'll just compile some few seconds to show the progress. I painted the top cloth and the pants with a grey base and then gave them a bluish wash. Used the same blue for the cape and then both a light green and brown 
for the armor pieces, so some looked less damaged than other rusty ones. Used a darker brown for the leather pieces like belt, stripes and lower part of the legs. Went with black for the boots and the gloves. And then a darker green for the laser pistol. Used silver for the metallic parts of the laser pistol, the belt's buckle and the whole helmet. Then put some brownish wash over the armor and the helmet. Mixed some white pearl and light green for the pit boy and painted the screen with a metallic dark green. I molded and casted a base from the Institute Core Pack and used it as the base. Let's take a look now at our custom Mando Wanderer out there in the wasteland. As shown, you can make great use of the Mesh Mixer software with just little expertise or knowledge. I hope you like this custom model and can print it and use it in your game too. Both standalone STL and Lychee file are available in the description. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, turn on notifications and share it with your friends. Follow the Facebook and Instagram pages for more pictures of this build. I'll see you in the next craft.